In this episode, we're going to talk about the amount of degeneracy that was widespread all over the Arab world after the destruction of Islam altogether in the area. When we know it, we can appreciate how the message of Prophet Muhammad and how the Quran converted one of the worst societies in history into literally the best group of people that walked on earth in all human history. If you think that I'm exaggerating, listen until the end first and you will understand. And guys, before I continue, if someone is new here, check the link in the description for the whole playlist and start from the beginning because it will be very hard for you to understand what we're talking about unless you watch the previous episodes first. So you'll find link to the full playlist in the description box below. Anyway, so when the religion, when Islam is gone from a society, when you remove God, from the equation, everyone, and I mean everyone, will have his own opinion on what should I do and what shouldn't I do. And sometimes there are people who are wise and who understand what is good and what's bad, and sometimes there are idiots and the world is filled with idiots. So if you give everyone equal right to have his own opinion, then don't blame yourself when you have to accept the opinion of idiots. especially. In a world like this, that has no reference, that has no truth, that has no purpose, if you are strong enough and powerful enough, your opinion will matter more. And if this power is in the hands of the wrong people, that's it. Then the wrong opinion will be the law. We have a lot of narrations. This is one example. We used to worship stones. And if we found better stone, we would throw it away and make a god of the better stone. And if we can't find a good stone to make a god out of it, we will get some dust and we will milk our uh, animals. So put some milk on some dust, make a dough, and then from this dough we will make a god and circle this god and worship it. It, it sounds ridiculous, but if you really think about it, when people remove sense out of religion and just follow whatever their fathers are doing, Religion doesn't really become about what is correct and what is the truth. Religion becomes, this is my father's religion and this is your father's religion and I am better than you, therefore my religion is better than your religion. And this is what you see right now. You have a lot of people who are cheering for their religion like they're cheering for their football team. They don't care if it's true or not, they just want to win. So even though it doesn't make any sense, even though there is no chain of narration, no proof, nothing, nothing, they still cheer for it because it's about winning. It's about us versus them. It's not about where is the truth. So when it, when it becomes like that, when it becomes a competition, you will find people who are doing shitty things like putting some milk on, uh, on, on dust and creating a god and worshipping it. Check this other narration. These people in ignorance, they were making gods out of everything. Some of them were making gods out of deeds and then worship it. And when he's hungry, he would eat his god and make another god later. Again, it's not about if it makes sense or not. It's not about what is the truth. It's about us versus them and I want to win. And you find that the overwhelming majority of conversations about religion these days is like that. No one is listening. Everyone is just preparing a cool response so he can win an argument. But no one really cares if his argument makes sense or not. No one really cares about proof. No one really cares about the truth, except a few. And these few is why we're making these videos. Your honor in society is based on where are you, where are you from and what is your family and what is your race. And if you are unlucky and you are black, then automatically you are a slave. Like literally, there is no way you can be black without being a slave. And being a slave in Arabia was something that is really humiliating. You are treated less than an animal. You are treated like an object that they own you and you just are in forced labor forever. You and your family and your descendants. It was something like what the British were doing with their slaves. So we don't need to go through it. 
Uh, you had wine, alcohol, everyone is drunk literally every day, which was really bad, which caused a lot of fights, a lot of problems, a lot of issues, and you already know how alcohol changes people into monkeys. You had adultery everywhere, and adultery is one of the easiest sins that becomes widespread the moment you get God out of the picture. And when it's widespread, that's it. Goodbye families. Adultery is much, much easier than having a family and taking responsibility and raising children. And when you destroy the family structure, you literally destroyed the life and the well-being of all the new generation, which is really bad. But however, people are weak against adultery. People are easily tempted. So when you remove God from the equation, it's like, why shouldn't I, you know? Ten men or less would go together on one woman. This is like, what? I, I don't think it's even fun that they were doing that. Then you had gambling, and of course, um, you know how gambling is the main source of like family issues, homeless people, uh, a lot of people losing their wealth, gambling addiction, all of these issues, you know that, it was widespread back then. And you had arrogance, and we know that arrogance is a source of a lot of evil, a lot of evil. Arrogance leads to tribalism, so it is about my tribe, my pride, right? So if my tribe is oppressed, I will support my tribe, and if my tribe is an oppressor, I will also support my tribe. I will just support my tribe anyway. I don't care if we're right or wrong, it's just us, we have to be right. This led to a lot of oppression, profanity, toxicity, foul language. People were interrupting each other, mocking each other. People were spreading rumors. There was no way to find the truth about anything because everything is a rumor like we see now on the internet. There were a lot of gossiping, backbiting. There were a lot of false testimonies, so justice system went to hell. People were harming their neighbors, people were fighting, people were killing each other over every little thing. Wars were made over little to no reasons. And wars would stay for years and generations after generations, like literally people don't even know why we're fighting, but we're fighting because our fathers were fighting and they were fighting because our grandfathers were fighting and so on. And if you really, really think in depth about our current modern life, you will find something similar. Maybe it's not called tribalism, maybe it's called nationalism, maybe it's called white man supremacy. When you remove the real God from the picture, comes the new God. The new God of the world is money. And this is exactly what happened. People were stealing the inheritance of orphans, people were oppressing each other, taking their money from each other. Fraud in business, cheating in business were everywhere, monopoly. And of course, the big guy, usury. Usury is like a trap. When usury is spread in a society, the rich will become richer and the poor will become poorer. And if you are a poor person, you have very, very, very small chance into getting out of this trap. Every time a poor person gets in a situation that he needs to borrow money, he becomes more poorer by paying interest and the rich become more... In you know the story, we, have, we don't have to talk about it. People were selling that, people were selling what they don't have, and then maybe something happens, and whatever they sold and took money for, they can't deliver, and you know all of these stories, it is happening until now, unfortunately. When the rich become richer, you go to extravagance. Extravagance in buying something that we call libas shohra or what we call now in English, luxury brands, you know, I, it's literally the same product, but you know, it has this logo that says that I'm better than you. So I'm paying, for example, 1000, 100 of them is for the product and 900 of them is to prove that I'm better than you. This was widespread back then. And taking pride in wasting resources, like buying more than you need and putting on the table more than you need, just to prove to people that you can, you know, and you're amazing because you can waste resources. And unfortunately, this is what we're doing. On the other side, you have the poor, you have the homeless, completely ignored. The amount of homeless people were increasing, which is a normal result for uh, degeneracy. And then because money is everything, and it doesn't matter how you get it, tribes were invading each other to steal each other's wealth. 
and they don't have to say that we are here to steal your wealth. They will come up with any excuse. They can just say, oh, we're spreading democracy or whatever, and just go take the oil. Our invasion of Iraq left one million Iraqis dead. And that's 5% of the entire population of the country. Bandits were everywhere, so traveling alone was not a good idea. And you had all types of crime that you can imagine. And until now, if, if you can look at some statistics, maybe rape rate, maybe murder rate, maybe crime rate, and compare secular countries and religious countries, even though these secular countries, they have very, very, very good police system. And these religious countries, they are developing countries with very poor police system, with poor technology and surveillance system. Any normal person will expect that developing countries with poor people and very bad police systems will have higher crime rate and rape rate and murder rate. But however, it is the opposite. Which if, if you are an atheist, you wouldn't understand. But if you know what religion really is, you will understand, of course. Less crime rate without even police. I remember one example off the top of my head. In the Arab Spring, most of the countries in the Middle East, people were protesting against their own governments, asking for like better life. One of these countries is called Egypt. In this country, what happened is the whole police system, the whole police system was shut down for more than one year. Literally, you call the police, no one is answering. There is not even one cup in the whole country. Do you know what happened in the crime rate? Exactly what you expect. Nothing. People were safe. Life was normal. Nothing. There are other countries, if you imagine them, without police for one day, people will literally eat each other. And then you have treatment of women. And of course, because, you know, there is no reference, there is no God, so whoever is more powerful will put the rules. And because men were more powerful, they put the rules. So women became nothing. Women became literally objects. Women were forced into prostitution, which is unfortunately something that still exists. Rape was widespread. Women couldn't own anything. Women couldn't inherit. Women didn't have property rights. Women were treated so badly to the extent that some types of food, which tastes delicious, were forbidden for women. So they would say what? وَقَالُوا مَا فِي بُطُونِ هَذِهِ الْأَنْعَامِ خَالِصَةً لِذُكُورِنَا So this delicious meat is only for our males. Our females don't get to eat this delicious meat. Women were treated like furniture. In this narration, ثُمَّ قَالَ عُمَرْ وَاللَّهِ إِنَّا كُنَّا فِي الْجَاهِلِيَّ مَا نَعُدُّ لِلنِّسَاءِ أَمْرًا حَتَّى أَنْزَلَ اللَّهُ فِيهِنَّ مَا أَنْزَلْ وَقَسَمَ لَهُنَّ مَا قَسَمْ We didn't consider women anything in the ignorance time until God gave them what he gave them and decided for them what he decided for them. People were gambling their women. A guy would go to a card game, bet his money, he loses his money. And then he says, you know what, I bet my wife. And he loses a card game, he loses his wife in a cards game. He goes back without his wife. People were inheriting their women. For example, a guy has a house and a farm and two women. When he dies, his son takes the house and the farm and the two women. Imagine. People were doing something called wife swap. I am bored from my wife. I will give you my wife. You give me yours for one week. We have fun and then we exchange back. And the last thing regarding women was female babies. So when someone gets the news that his newborn is a girl, his face becomes dark out of sadness. He's hiding from the people because of the bad news. He's embarrassed. He's embarrassed he has a girl. And he's thinking, should I keep her and be embarrassed for the rest of my life? Or should I kill her and throw her in the dust? In this history book, for example, Lu'lu' al-Maknun fi Sirat al-Nabi al-Ma'mun, one of the companions of the Prophet, he said, Islam came to us and I have saved the life of 300 female babies before getting killed. Alhamdulillah, this is part of the past, or at least part of our past, because until now, if you look to the east, you will find millions of babies getting killed, and if you look to the west, you will find millions of babies getting killed every year. 
going back to the Arab world, you had ignorance, you had illiteracy. People didn't really care about education or science. People were mistreating animals, so cruelty to animals was something normal. Because, you know, it's about money, it's not about how the animal feels. Alhamdulillah, this is from our past, not from our present, as we see right now. Even people were slaughtering animals in front of each other. The lucky animal is the animal which got slaughtered because the others who saw their brother getting slaughtered in front of their own eyes will live in fear until they die. People had hygiene problem. People wouldn't clean themselves after they finish going to the bathroom. Something that is, alhamdulillah, part of our past. Unfortunately, we still see it until now in other nations. It is good business for the people towel companies, but you can't have lack of hygiene in the whole society just to benefit one or two companies. You had bribes widespread everywhere. You had gender issues. You had men, some men, that uh, act like women. And you had some women who acted like women. You had a lot of family issues, of course, because of the widespread adultery. You had the uh, breaking of family ties. Generally, the family should be something like 100 people because the family is not husband and wife. The family is like brothers and sisters and their children and mother and father and uncle and aunt and their children and their children, children and your grandfather. And it's like easily 100 people or more. So people were breaking family ties until the family becomes very small. You're worried. What will happen to my children if I die? Yeah, because you're alone. Where is your family, right? Anyway, well, I don't want to talk about family ties now, but people were breaking family ties. And even this tiny family, which is like two people, husband and wife, who are thinking, should we get children or not? They had a lot of issues because of the infidelity rate. Husbands were cheating and wives were cheating. It, it was something like we see now in free societies, something like 80% or more of husbands and wives are unfaithful. Leadership was not given to whoever deserves it. Leadership is something that is easily, easily bought with money. If you have enough power and influence and money to buy people's loyalty or to manipulate the public opinion using the media, and media at the time was poetry, you can become a leader very easily by paying for it, not because you deserve it, not because you're wise, just because you're powerful enough to influence. And you had rich merchants who would support the presidential campaign in exchange for passing the energy bill. I'm sorry, no, I'm talking about the past. Okay, you had rich merchants who would give money to the leaders and in return, the leaders will return the favor by passing some rules for them so it will make their life easier. Maybe help them do monopolies, maybe help them generate more sales or revenue. Anyway. This was a very bad thing that was happening in the past in Arabia. And last but not least, mass depression. Suicide rates that were alarming and lack of meaning in life. So literally no one is happy. Some people are having amounts of fun while doing some sins, but throughout life Life is depressing and the only way to get through life is to escape it by being drunk all the time. This was Arabia just before the arrival of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. In the next episode, inshallah, we will see how Prophet Muhammad transformed this society into the best society in human history the most righteous people, the most pious people, the most successful people in all aspects of life. So subscribe and hit the notification bell icon so you won't miss the next episode. And Muslim brothers and sisters, if you want to support our da'wah project and help the message of God reach more people, unfortunately, this is how the YouTube algorithm works. The more you do engagement with the video, like liking, commenting or sharing, the more YouTube will suggest it to other people. So help us out and if you want to support us financially, we will leave donation links under the video, inshallah. Thanks and see you in the next episode. Assalamu alaikum.